Welcome to EVTN News. Um, it's what a few months away from the massacre of the Latin Mass. Not really, because we have the Latin Mass. They're just trying to destroy it, but they won't. It'll be coming up. First, let's start off with some of the recent news. There is a new head of Congregation of Bishops. This is a uh, this is interesting. Pope Francis has named Bishop Robert Francis Prevost to lead the Dicastery for Bishops, succeeding Cardinal Mark Ouellette. Prevost, age 67, has been serving as Bishop of the Peruvian Diocese of Chicleo, where he was appointed in 2014. He is a Chicago native, and he was previously appointed by Francis as a member of both the Dicastery for Bishops and the Dicastery for Clergy, and has previously served as head of the Global Augustinian Order. Okay, a few red flags there. The Augustinians are known as, um, uh, not quite the Jesuits, but uh, they have a reputation for being sort of like that. And he's from Chicago. Hmm. Don't like that. In 2021, the Pillar reported that while... Uh, Bishop Prevost was a provincial Augustinian superior in the United States. He permitted a known sexual abuser to reside near a Catholic elementary school without alerting either the school or parish to the priest's presence. And he now leads the department charged with handling complaints against serving and retired bishops and overseeing several ongoing investigations into complaints or misconduct of negligence against bishops around the world. Yikes. Not good. So there you go. There's the Francis Church. Relatively unknown, but he's from Chicago. Of course, the Bernadine uh, network, potentially, right? Age 67, would he? Would that be uh, the prime time spot for the, the Bernadine network? But also Augustinian, covering up, um, or, well, turning a blind eye to molesting. Uh, fits right fits right in with the Francis Church. So, <clears throat> the exclusive synodal group will go on a writing retreat. <laughs> the Continental Synod team of North America, consisting of 20 members, will undertake a writing retreat, during which they will prayerfully distill prayerfully distill the responses from the Church in the U.S. and Canada into one of the seven. Continental reports due March 31st at the Vatican. Um, okay, so I think the writing retreat is how many Vatican II buzzwords can you fit into a run-on sentence? Remember last week? They'll probably do that. I don't know that they will prayerfully distill responses. I think they were told what to do. I think they were hand-selected from... I don't know if Pope Francis selected them or one of his um, one of his good friends selected them, but they were picked for a reason. It's not it's not a random thing. They don't just say, "Hey, you know, you're a YouTuber, John the Son of Thunder, join this synodal team." No, they have a very specific goal in mind. We'll find that out later in the show. <laughs> Moving on to Archbishop Roach. Or Cardinal Roach, right? That's horrible. He says, he's, he uh, said, he's, Cardinal Roach is the Prefect of Divine Worship, and he said during uh, an October 8th lecture published in Music and Liturgy in the Journal of the Society of St. Gregory, he said, Don't leave the liturgical field to those small and vocal minorities of whatever hue who seem obstinately to stand against the Holy Father and against the, fail, the against the liturgical reform. He said he is well aware that people sometimes talk about liturgy wars. He said, from what I understand, many of these battles today are carried out in cyberspace, where people with various agendas and motivations set themselves up as experts and interpreters of all things liturgical. He complains that these keyboard warriors don't seem to have an who, oh, these keyboard warriors seem to have an outsized effect, particularly on seminarians, and he rages against allegedly distorted agendas 
that are so frequently aired through blogs. So this guy really sounds like he's, um, it really sounds like he gets online and takes a look and he tries to see, oh, this person insulted me. Well, I got to get back at them. These traditionalists are so mean online. So you're that insecure that you have to go online for affirmation and then when you don't get it, you have to try to destroy them. Yeah, that's pathetic. That's a good, I mean, that's a, that's a good um, summary of the Francis Church. Speaking of the Francis Church, Pope Francis has appointed Bishop Mario Dorsonville, an auxiliary bishop for the Archdiocese of Washington, to lead the Diocese of uh, Halma Thibodeau in Louisiana. Dorsonville, age 62, was born in Bogota, Colombia. He first moved to, United, to the United States in early in the early 1990s to study for a doctorate in ministry from the Catholic University of America. Dorsonville has been an auxiliary bishop for the Archdiocese of Washington since 2015, and he has been a strong proponent of immigration. So there's two things in his favor. Uh, Archdiocese of Washington, he's been there, and he's... Um, yeah, anyone in the Archdiocese of Washington, especially a higher-up position, uh, do they know the history of that Archdiocese? And are they actively working to cover up the history? But he's also, obviously, a huge proponent of immigration. So basically, these bishops in the United States are not from the United States. The New Francis bishops... More and more, they're not from the United States, which wouldn't be a big deal if they were Catholic. Um, also, they're young. It's sad. But there is a young, there is a, another, a younger Francis Bishop. Columbus Bishop Earl Fernandez. Um, well, this was, and this information was found previously, but it said he will assist at a solemn mass, uh, Latin Mass, on February 5th on the throne at St. Leo the Great Church run by the Institute of Christ the King, which is, I, I believe, is that in Columbus? I think. He, um, so that was yesterday, so I guess I'll have to do my research and see if he actually said the Mass, which is, which would be great. Maybe he'll stand up for us whenever uh, the massacre happens. So, moving on, we're going good bishop, bad bishop, good bishop, or no, the other way around. Anyway, Cardinal McElroy wants to change the catechism. <laughs> no surprise. Here's some quotes. So he had gave an interview as if his, um, as if his uh, essay for America Magazine in opposition to the Catholic faith wasn't enough. He gave an interview. He said, my own view is that Judgmentalism is the worst sin in the Christian life. Oh, really? Judgmentalism. That's the worst sin. I can think of worse sins. Like, namely, the four sins that cry out to heaven for vengeance. One of them being sodomy. But, he addresses that. Which he doesn't even, I don't know, apparently he doesn't think it's even a sin. He says, um, by not addressing some of these issues of inclusion, we're losing the younger generation. In my own view, it's clear that a big part of the drift of young people away from the Catholic Church is from having very uncomfortable feelings about issues on women and LMNOP issues in terms of the life of the Church. I would say the opposite. Because what he's trying to do is create a Unitarian church, which already exists. And how many young people go there? If you want to reject the Catholic faith, there are plenty of other options, just not any good ones. Uh, so he addresses LMNOP and the Catechism. He said, I've said for years, I felt, and others have too, that the intrinsically disordered language is a disservice. 
The problem is it's used in the catechism as a philosophical term, but to us in our country and really most of the world, disorder is thought of as psychological. It's a terrible word and it should be taken out of the catechism. Uh, no. No, it shouldn't. Okay, and then here you can see the, the future plans are revealed. Uh, you already knew it, but they're saying it out loud. He said, when I got there for the Amazon Synod, he was talking about the, you know, the Amazon Synod a few years ago, they'd already done the consultation. Whoa. They had a report, it was really good, and it formed the framework for the Synod. Now there were many things in the Synod that came up. One of them was women deacons, the other was more married priests, all these different questions. Many things got accomplished, a tremendous amount of good got accomplished. Not everything that was on the agenda got accomplished. You know what that means? They didn't accomplish everything they wanted to accomplish, and so now they're trying to get it through. And that's the Synod on Synodality. Um, I'll skip forward here, because I'm kind of jumping around. I could have organized these in more uh, related areas, so I will do this. The Synod just, uh, was it today? It may have just been today where the Synod, the Vatican's Synod Twitter account, um, basically acknowledged everything is fake. You knew it, but they acknowledged it. Here's a, just a short segment from that post. It said, in the consultation, uh, the Synod consultation, we were able to hear all voices except the voice of those who did not speak because they could not or did not want to. <laughs> okay, so they didn't hear the voices of people who didn't want to participate. They said, we also listened to the silence. We also listened to the empty chair. If one could not, because we have failed to listen, we are called upon to verify what we have failed in. So they're saying, so they're saying we listen to the silence, we listen to the empty chair, but they're hearing what they want to hear. <laughs> so they didn't listen to the voices of the traditionalists who didn't want to participate in the rigged synodal process, but they're listening to the people they're not listening to anyone. They're just making up that they want that they're just making up these quotes, these statements, so that their heretical ideas will be just to, to an attempt to justify their heretical ideas. So it's rigged. They're admitting it's rigged. People didn't want to participate in the synod, yet they're gonna to try to pretend that they know what these people want. These people never told them anything because they didn't want to participate in the Synod. Yet they're assuming that these people want LMNOP and women priests. That's it. They rigged it. It's all fake. So if you went to the Synod and thought that your opinions mattered, they don't. Um, all right, let's get to the Latin Mass news. Oh. Okay, so the newest report on the Latin Mass, uh, according to the latest sources, the uh, Vatican will launch their attack on the Old Rite during Holy Week, just like I speculated. On a German website, it says that baptism, marriage, confirmation, and ordinations will be banned even for Ecclesia Dei communities like the FSSP and the Institute of Christ the King. The rumored date is April 3rd, which is Monday of Holy Week. It's also the anniversary of the promulgation of the Novus Ordo Rite. The freedom of priests of the traditional communities, uh, this is the German translation, the freedom of the priests of the traditional communities celebrating Mass after the recorded Missal without special permission, is restricted to use within the canonically established houses of these communities. Um, I believe that 
it's basically where the Institute of Christ the King, where the FSSPs sort of like have their own parishes. Um, I don't know if it's if they own the buildings. I think the canonical houses, I think that's what it's called. Um, I think that there are some across the United States, but it's not necessarily public where they are or what they are. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure, but I know I know that this will be interesting because if their parish is on loan from the diocese, then they might be kicked out. If they go to like a diocesan church to say mass on like Sundays or something, then that might be banned. Now there's all these rumors, you know, I think like we all thought a lot of them were directed towards the diocesan priests, but here the Ecclesia Dei communities, there's a chance that they might be um, restricted as well. Now, why are why are these communities not doing everything they can to administer the sacraments right now? We're in a state of emergency. They should have done this already. They should have already been um, confirming everyone that they could. They should have been. They should be ordaining priests even if it's speeding it up a little bit, speeding up the process, ordain them first, send them back to the seminary, keep them trained, uh, get them, have them finish their classes after they're ordained. I mean, seriously, come on. We're in a state of emergency. You can't act right now. You can't just take things as they are and say, oh, we got a permission slip from Pope Francis. Yay. Yay us. No. Because soon your permission slip's going to be torn up. Possibly. There's no sense of urgency. Come on. Let's figure it out, people. Uh, let's get to the comments. I do have one more thing. Let me see if I can find it. There's also another rumor. I did want to read this. It was the last second edition. So this is from a, well, let's check in the live chat. Uh, this soon is odd. All right, so, oh no, I was also gonna talk about the uh, FSSP. So recently, let me pull this up too. Uh, recently, I think just this past week there has been a concerted effort by the FSSP to attack the SSPX. So Matt Fratt interviewed a guy, John Salsa, and I didn't watch it. I don't feel like it. Salsa, 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 with a Z. He's been all over the place. He's been a Freemason, went to the SSPX, and every place he leaves he opposes them. So he got, went on Matt Fratt and trashed the SSPX apparently. And so there's that. But the FSSP priests, several, a, a number of them have promoted this, uh, this interview in their bulletins, which is really disgusting. The, the late, uh, you cannot attend the SSPX parish here in Phoenix for any of the sacraments because they are not in union with Rome or the local bishop, even though they have canonical status. Hmm. He's still a mason in line about Lefebvre. No, but the FSSP, I think this is, this is really their final chance. Um, they're really trying to, I don't know, they're really trying to get in good with the Francis Church. And that's going to get you nothing. That's going to get you shut down. And you're going to say the Novus Ordo and you're going to be happy about it. Or you can go to the SSPX once Pope Francis shuts down your church or bans you from the sacraments or bans you from saying Latin Mass every Sunday, because that's probably going to happen. It's sad, but the FSSP, they've made, the, they made their decision long ago, over 30 years ago. That's their founding story, is breaking away from the SSPX. And 
they were promised a bishop by Rome. Did they remember that? Do you remember that part of the story? Or is canonical status the only thing that matters? Are they going to cave like the Institute did in Chicago? That was a test run, I think. I think Cardinal Supic got direct orders from Rome to try it out, see what happened. The Institute flinched. They gave up. I think the FSSP will do the same. Maybe some priest will jump to the SSPX. I don't think it's I don't think it's a huge transition. It'll be helpful for us. It's better for it's better for the laity than uh, you know having the priest just kind of sit around and say their own private masses with no one allowed to attend. It's better than yeah. Having a FSSP or Institute priest jump to the SSPX, uh, at least they'll be able to hear confessions. All right, here's the latest information I saw today. There's this letter that has some redacted information. It doesn't say which bishop. There's a bishop writing to his priest, and i got to see what all uh, what all is in here. It's a long letter. Basically, the bishop says he issued a dispensation of Traditionis Custodes under Canon 87. Rome has uh, basically told him that he can't do that. He can't use Canon 87, which is basically the bishop uh, has control over his diocese. That's really what it says. The bishop knows what's best for his diocese, and so he can... Uh, overroll like directives from Rome uh, if he I don't know if that's I don't know if that that's sort of the ex, that's sort of the idea of it and so some of the bishops are using that and saying well Latin mass doesn't hurt our diocese and I'm just going to kind of disregard what's in uh, what's what's in this ridiculous um, what, what's contained in the ridiculous traditions custodes so he's some, he's required to submit uh, a request to Rome. The bishop says he's required to submit a request to Rome for a dispensation, but he has to uh, get information from his priest to answer these questions. First, how many people usually attend the Extraordinary form masses in your parish. The extraordinary form is no longer um, in existence. It's it's out. The terminology is extinct. It's the you can call it the traditional mass or the old mass or the Roman Catholic mass. But the extraordinary form is out. The second, how many extraordinary form masses are celebrated each week in your parish and on which days? Third, what steps are being taken to lead the faithful who are attached to the antecedent liturgy towards the celebration of a liturgy according to the liturgical books reformed by decree of the Second Vatican Council? Uh, fourth, for my information, the bishop's information, is uh, it is the restriction forbidding by nation involving the extraordinary form mass on weekdays being observed, which means you can't say the Latin mass and the Novus Ordo on the same day. Um, it is most important to note that the dicastery added, this information will assist us, the dicastery, in making a decision which dispensation should be granted and whether the clear direction traced by Pope Francis and his motu proprio is being accepted and followed. So it's a tyrant, and he's trying to destroy the faith of everyone. But he won't. We won't give up our mass. Maybe the priests will. I hope not. Uh, the bishop said, While I am convinced this dispensation will be granted, I am equally convinced it will be granted only for a limited period of time, and it, will, it very probably will not be renewable. Uh, this is consistent with the insistence that there be evidence of some active work of bringing those devoted to the extraordinary form mass 
to the full acceptance of the liturgy of the 1970 reform. Yeah, right. If no such effort is presently demonstrable, then it would seem to me the possibility of such a dispensation is greatly reduced. <laughs> and then he quotes um, Roach's rotten, uh, rotten tirade against the Latin Mass. That's pathetic. These guys, did they ever have the Catholic faith? I mean, seriously. FSSP priests need to stand up and say no to any restrictions. Yeah, but will they? We, th we, we thought the Institute of Christ the King would. I doubt the FSSP will. I would hope the FSSP would stand up and say no restrictions for some people. The FSSP, yeah. But I doubt it. Um, I don't know. I don't know about the SSPX, but... Uh, that's going to be it. That, that'll be your option. I just think they're going to cave. They have no game plan. I'm not going to insult the FSSP. If I had an FSSP parish locally, I'd go. It'd be good. I mean, I'd, I'd like it. But I won't have a local FSSP parish unless I move. Because they're not coming around me because they won't be allowed to establish a parish. At least until we get a Catholic Pope. Which could be a while. Might be soon, but it might. It also might be a while. I hope there's some resistance, but I'm not um, optimistic about it. I think maybe, if anything, maybe 20% of the FSSP priests would resist. Uh, SSPV. So the F SSPV are, oh, uh, what's his name? Bishop Kelly? Is that it? SSPV are, I don't think they're said of, I don't know that they're completely said of a contest. I think they kind of decide. Um, I heard they're kind of weird. Someone's going to like really insult me. But they say that your baptism is invalid if you were baptized in the Novus Ordo Church. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't go. Um,. FSSP has a thriving seminary. Well, yeah, but if you can't ordain priests, then what good is it? It's... Yeah, SSPV or Sede Vacantis. I don't think that, I don't know that they are. I think that they let the priests decide whether they think, whether they uh, believe who is the valid pope. Nest out in Burbage of Virginia, tricked over here, from Tennessee to Hassel or corrupt bishop Sticka. They're all rotten. Not all of them. Most of them are. I mean, most of them are compromised, at least. They're going to do whatever they're told, fall in line. They're not going to stand up for the Catholic faith. And really, someone mentioned Strickland. Will he even stand up for the Latin Mass? He doesn't want to see it go away. He's going to get kicked out soon anyway. Strickland's too Catholic. Maybe some of these other bishops, maybe a bishop or two will get fired up and, I don't know, ordain priests without the permission of Rome. Let's hope. In the old right. They don't want any Novus Ordo, like, I don't know. There's, You know there's Novus Ordo Sede Vicantis. Patrick Coffin is one of them. <laughs> That's a weird spot to be. Really weird spot to be. Ah. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're all compromised. All right, well, that was that breaking news. Not breaking news, I don't know. It's all rumors, but it's happening. Stuff's going down. The FSSP probably got the memo. They were probably told, hey, if you want to be able to say Latin Mass, then you're going to have to, um, you know, step up your loyalty to the Vatican. Why are so many of them all of a sudden promoting this video, promoting this interview of anti-SSPX propaganda? That's what it is. But you know, if you're going to watch that garbage, watch the two-hour documentary on Lefebvre. 
watch the SSPX Crisis of the Church series. Crisis in the Church. Crisis of the Church. Yeah. It's Crisis in the Church. Watch their Sacrament series and their Vocation series. Actually, that's been really good. I've, you know, I've enjoyed watching those, and it's been, it's good, it's good stuff. Solid advice. But the, uh, the Crisis in the Church series, that kind of gives you an idea of where they're coming from. So if you're going to listen to anti-SSPX stuff, listen to what the SSPX say themselves. Yeah, and at this point, any anti-SSPX stuff is just lies. Church militants coverage, yeah, it's awful. Um, it really just, it's insulting. They insult people, but they don't actually attack like the doctrinal positions, because they have nothing. They have nothing except they're schismatics. Well, guess who's? Do you think that going to think about this? Your local Novus Ordo parish. Can you can you be can you be like very confident that you're not going to hear heresy from the pulpit at your local Novus Ordo parish? And this honest question. I, I don't know. I I think it's tough. Who's who's schismatic? Is it is it people who acknowledge Francis as Pope? Is it is it a group of Catholics who have canonical status? The SSPX has a canonical status. It's a weird one. It's a Peronist canonical status. Something only so something only um, people like Pope Francis would come up with. Wow, parents got ripped off of their valuables by an SSPX priests. Wow, that's disappointing. That's the only place you can get the old right sacraments. Some of you, I don't know where all of you live. Some of you have Byzantine options. There are some good Byzantine priests, some really good ones. But that's only in certain regions of the, it's really the northeastern United States. Uh, and it's, it's spotty. Where are these Eastern Catholic churches? Kind of spotty. But if you can go there, that's an option. You should definitely consider that. <laughs> lots, of, uh, and, lots of opinions on the FSSP. I think it's sad. I think they can both coexist. That's the thing. I think they can both, I think they need to work together, like, um, unite the clans. You know, Michael Matt was trying to do that. I think that would be helpful, but, you know, if they're just going to try to, you know, insult the SSPX, then, look, FSSP, are they going to do the old right sacraments? Like, are you offering the old right sacraments? Because if you're not, people are going to go somewhere where they are. I say this as a member of both the FSSP and SSPX in Pennsylvania. Oh, cool. That's nice you have the option of both. That's cool. Whoa. Oh, the only option we have in the Eastern Rite is Ukrainian Catholic. Hey, I like Ukrainian Catholic. I like their songs. Go to that. Try it. Try it out. Look at your options. Ukrainians, from what I understand, the Ukrainians um, resisted Rome. The Ukrainian Catholics, uh, I mean, like, like the right, the the R I T E, the right uh, Ukrainian Byzantines. Um, they resisted Rome for a while. I don't know the full history of it, but they, you know, I think they went. Uh, they were technically considered schismatics for a while. And, you know, there are a few saints who have died under excommunication. We shouldn't try to get excommunicated. That's a bad idea. But we need to resist, especially if something goes against divine law. No, oh, this is interesting. Um... <laughs> Lots of comments here. 
Yes, they have the old right sacraments. Yeah, what's Connolly going to do? He's going to have... Rome's going to hold his feet to the fire. We only have a diocesan option here. Nearest... Yeah, well... I can do a video on this. Um, Matrix. Father Zeta's church. Yeah, the vacant monastery. I, um... I actually went there a while ago, and I didn't talk to the priest, but I got some good information on it. It's not... Uh, the building's not in the best shape. The water quality's not very good. And who knows what's going to happen with these latest rounds of restrictions in the Diocese of Harrisburg. Um, yeah, but if you have Ukrainian, right, take a look. Take a look and see what you think. I like it. Um... What is this? Are you worried? No. I'm not worried about church militants suing me. My video, I criticized church militant like several years ago and they still use one of my video clips for their coverage like after that. And I said, didn't you watch any of my videos? Pray that God, oh yeah. Matrix, where are you from? Matrix 1, where, where are you from? Where, what church do you normally go to, Matrix? I'm interested to know. Loris is a vengeful guy. See, I don't care. Like, I don't watch church militants, so I can't comment on a lot of their stuff. Um, I don't know. I haven't really attacked them on Twitter. I think that's probably bad. Uh, Twitter's a very awful place. Have you seen, like, a lot of the... Um, have you seen a lot of the, like, coverage of, um, or not coverage, have you seen a lot of, like, the Twitter battles going back and forth between restoring the faith and church militant, and there's some, like, traditional Catholic lady who was insulting people, and it's just awful. Like, I don't, I don't know, I, I kind of read that stuff, but I'm like, I don't want to. We're St. Mary's Byzantine Matrix. Um... Lily, I can, um, oh, wow. Lily, I might run into you sometime, just saying. Um, yeah, so, all right, I'll check it out. I'll check this out. <laughs> Yes, I mean, I have, I post stuff on Twitter, I, I retweet some things occasionally, but the less time you spend on Twitter, the better. Look, I've, I've had an opportunity to read some religious, um, you know, religious books, and there's some good stuff. There's some really good stuff out there. And if you're spending time on Twitter, that's more time, that's time you're wasting, when you could be spending it um, praying, reading, watching this YouTube channel. <laughs> and uh, I'll have to do a Catholic cheapskate episode because lately I've been treasure hunting at secondhand stores for books and it's been hmm, kind of successful I have some successes and I'm, I'm actually really excited about it I'm excited to share those with you and there might be more I mean I'm not I'm not done treasure hunting there's some good places to go and just go to a Goodwill or even Salvation Army St. Vincent de Paul although a lot of that stuff St. Vincent de Paul, a lot of the Catholic stuff is kind of picked over, as a lot of the Catholics go there. But, it's good. Um, tend to go to Carmel to make Ephesus pure. Yeah. Yeah, so I might, I might run into some of you guys sometime. Uh, yeah, you're in a, you're in a neat place, you guys. <laughs> Okay, well, that'll be it. Um, if you guys... Let me think about this. I, I don't know that I've seen you guys a whole lot, Matrix. But, uh, anyway. I was disappointed to see Church Militant has ordinary time for their evening prayer that they do before their condensed evening news. Yeah, so that's a big deal. Get yourselves, like, an old right calendar to follow. The FSSP has one on their website like a kind of like a 
sort of. Just, I don't know, search Old Rate Calendar and you'll find one. You'll find the readings. Follow those. If you have a Latin Mass Missal, follow it. Because it has, like, the, the readings of the day. That's good stuff. Okay. Well, that's it, everyone. I hope you join me again sometime. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. This has been EVTN News. Until next time, we are the laity, and we will not be silent.